Hi, and welcome to The Key, where we unlock all that God has for you. I'm Jen Lee, and my mission is to connect you with the God who created you for a purpose. In John 10.10, 10, it says that the thief came only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come to give them life, and life more abundantly. Hi, you guys. Bless you. I'm glad you're tuning in. I'm going to have to keep this short because I've been having camera charging problems, so... I'm gonna jump right in. You guys know we are living through wild and tumultuous times. And this week, um, praying over the election, I, you know, I've gone back and forth a little bit between faith and fear. And like I told a friend today, uh, you know, we're in good company once in a while when we do that because I see my Bible heroes, many of them would waver between faith and fear. You know, I think about David. I think about Jeremiah. So many of our Bible heroes, you know, they struggled as we struggle. And right now, this is really a time to learn how to stand on our faith and how to walk when we cannot see what is ahead. So I just wanted to let you know what God has been speaking. So I had been struggling a little bit with a little bit of anxiousness about this whole thing. Um, we knew this election could take a little bit longer, but, um, when it, when it begins to happen and you start to see confusion and possible fraud in so many places, you know, you can become a little bit scared and, you know, become discouraged. And so yesterday morning I got up and I was reading through some messages from prayer team. And as I was doing that, um, I, the Lord kept speaking to me ever since actually the day before that. So starting on about the fourth, um, the Lord kept speaking to me and showing me uh, the parting of the Red Sea in Exodus. And it just kept coming to mind. Every time that I sat quiet with the Lord, I was thinking of and seeing the sea being parted. And I thought of this presidency and just how, you know, things look so confused and it looks as if um, for our president, like there may be no way. And what the Lord kept speaking to me was that it is very possible for him, the God of miracles, to make a way where there seems to be no way. And yesterday when we were speaking back and forth with the prayer team, I felt nudged to tell them about what I felt like the Lord was speaking. And then I also told a few of my family members because I've been on two big group texts, you know, talking about all of this and praying back and forth and encouraging. And um, it's been great to connect with people like that. But I felt led to tell them about it. And when I got done with telling the prayer team what I felt like God was speaking to me, I went to my Bible and I actually was planning on reading in Matthew. And this was the neatest thing. I grabbed my Bible. I flipped it open and was about to turn to Matthew and it landed right on Nehemiah 9 verse 11. And when I say right on, I mean my eyeballs were right on Nehemiah 9 11, like right on the verse. And this was really exciting. I'm going to read this verse to you guys right now. So this says, <laughs> And you divided the sea before them, so that they went through the midst of the sea on dry land. And their persecutors you threw into the deep, as a stone into the mighty waters. And when I got done reading that verse that I did not even know was quoted in Nehemiah, okay, because we know we're talking about the Exodus story here. I didn't know it was quoted in Nehemiah. I let out a shout of joy and a shout of praise. And there are moments in life when you just know that you know that you know that God is speaking to you. Sometimes we hear his voice on the inside, the still small voice. 
Sometimes it's louder. Sometimes we hear his voice and we see it in the word of God. Sometimes it's through a dream. Sometimes it's through a different person. And in this moment, I just knew that I knew that the Lord was speaking to me and confirming this to me. And the neat thing was another, just several minutes after that, I got a message from a pastor friend asking if I could come fill in and lead worship soon at their church. And I told them about what God had just confirmed. And he writes me back immediately and said, I am preaching on Exodus right now. And this coming Sunday, I am preaching on the parting of the Red Sea. Okay. Hallelujah. So that was amazing. This is not at my church. This is a different pastor friend. So I had no idea, you know, where he was at preaching his messages. So another confirmation. And I have had a couple since then that had to do with water, with water. It is so interesting. So I just wanted to encourage you guys tonight, if you have been battling hopelessness, if you just feel like, you know, I, I feel like the Lord spoke that he was going to uphold this president because of the godly principles that he stands for, because of how he stands for our freedom of speech and our religious freedoms, then do not give up. This is a time to stand on our faith. Okay, God is going to make a way where there seems to be no way. And you know what else really plays into this is patience. We have to be patient as they figure this out. I think the Lord we know is bringing many things into the light this year. There is a lot of corruption that is being exposed, you know, on the national level, but even there are things that are going to be coming out soon more even in our own town, okay? And I'm not going to say more about that right now, but there are going to be things coming out that are going to shock people. Okay, so God is exposing things. So after I did this, Joy rose up in me. And I tell you what, I walked in the joy of the Lord and the confidence and the peace of the Lord for the rest of the day yesterday. Hallelujah. And so what, what God is speaking is we need to use this moment to learn how to work our faith. Okay. I think for the most part, much of the church, we've just felt like, okay, we have faith in, in God, in Jesus as his son to come, you know, and purchase salvation for us on the cross. We believe that he's Lord, but we haven't always pressed in to learn how to really work our faith. What does that mean to stand in faith? You know, it's like we believe it for heaven, but we don't always believe it for earth and for the situations that we're in. And that is what, what faith truly is, is learning to walk in it on earth here, you know, the way that Jesus walked in it, to walk without being able to see what's ahead and to just know, you know, I have a hold of my father's hand. Jesus leads me as my good shepherd and my best friend. And he leads me beside still waters because he's so kind towards me and he doesn't want me to be afraid. Hallelujah. We just bless you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you for what you are speaking, Lord. Thank you, Father. You know, some of the most amazing testimonies that I've seen in my life, and my life, you know, and in some of my friends' and family's lives, have been in the situations where it looked utterly hopeless where every report was bad, where the doctor's report was bad, where the percentage of survival was so low, where you see things with your physical eyes and you think, I don't know how that can be resolved. But these very instances are opportunities for us to stand in faith. Okay, faith is believing in what you cannot see. This is what true faith is. And I reminded right now of when Jesus was out in the wilderness being tempted by the devil and how the devil used, you know, he used what Jesus could see in the physical and he used 
his own voice of doubt, you know, to sow doubt into Jesus by saying, did God really say? Did God really say? And I think about how now so many prophetic people, so many dreams and words have come forth by people who know the voice of the Lord. And they have all said that they believe that God's will is for this president to have another term. Because is he the perfect man? No, he's not the perfect man, but he's the perfect man for this job. He is the perfect man and the one that we need right now to defend our freedom of speech and our religious liberties. So we just call forth, Lord, oh, praise you, Lord. We call forth angel armies right now to guard this election, to guard this president in Jesus' name. Lord, we declare, we command hope to rise up and faith to rise up in your people right now. In Jesus' name, we say that we do not surrender our faith. We do not give up. We know, Lord, that it is not over until you say it's over, Father. We thank you for holding on to our hand and guiding us through these times, Lord. We know that the ride might be bumpy, Father, but we know, Lord, that as long as you are with us, we are safe. We declare right now that we are living in the secret place of the Most High God. I was with a godly friend today and we were just talking about that, how we feel like we are walking through Psalm 91 right now. Psalm 91 says that the people who know their God will live in the secret place of the Most High and they will see disasters and they will see people falling and sickness and all these things around them, but it will not come nigh their door. That is one of my favorite verses. So I encourage you guys, pray that over your home right now. Pray that so that you are covered in the name of Jesus. You know, we are watching a separation going on right now. We're watching God as, as he separates people who know him, and people who know of him, people who have a relationship with Jesus and people who just, sorry, but use Jesus as their ticket to heaven, hopefully. But that's it. That's all they want him for. They don't want him to be Lord of their life. They basically use him to try to stay out of hell. Okay, we know that's true. That's what the spirit of religion is. These are people that they want to be safe with him. They call on him when they need him and when they're desperate and when nothing else is working, but they don't want him in their daily life. Okay, I want to be one of those that walks hand in hand with God every day. I want to give him my life. I want to have him be Lord over my life. And that means every part of my life. And I just pray that over you guys today. I encourage you to start saying, okay, this is a, the shortest but most powerful prayer that the Lord taught me years ago. It's more of a declaration. But he said to me, he wanted me to pray this every day, multiple times a day. Jesus is the Lord of my life. That's it. Okay, so start to pray that if you struggle with your own will, you know, wanting to do things your own way, but you, you want to follow God, but you struggle, that's normal. All of us do that. But you, what will help you is to start declaring by faith, Jesus is the Lord of my life. All right. God bless you guys. Um, please reach out to me. I would love to talk more about this. You can go ahead and email me if you'd like to at jen at thekeywithjenlee.com. And also just a special reminder, next Saturday the 14th, I have a conference coming up. We're going to be talking about some of these things, but we're going to be really focusing on prayer and boldness, how to walk in boldness in the days that we are living in. So that'll be next Saturday morning, and it's at Open Space here in Sioux Falls. And it starts at 9 a.m. So tickets are available online and you can go ahead and register. And it's only going to be a small group of about 10 of us. So um, 
I, I'm hoping I will never be shut down by the government because we're going to have 10 people or less. So um, I encourage you to get tickets. I would love to see you guys there. We need people right now more than ever. We need to connect and we need to stay connected and walk closely with our God. We need to stick to him like glue right now, okay? Sometimes when the Lord reminds me of things, I, I laugh at the way he puts it, but um, that's how I saw it the other day. Like he was saying, you stick to me like glue. And I say, yes, Lord, I will stick to you like glue. So stick to him like glue. Remember that we walk by faith, not by sight. And just look forward to the parting of the Red Sea, okay? God will make a way. God will make a way in Jesus name. I'll see you guys next week at 6 p.m. hopefully on the key with Jen Lee. I need to